Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and this is a quick overview video of my testing of the Epson P8500 printer. Now, that's too big a printer for me to get in the office here, and it's also, that's a 44-inch version. Even the 24-inch P6500 is a bit big to get in the kitchen where I've done some of the uh, printer reviews. It's, though for the size of it, it's actually a very compact printer. I went up to the headquarters of Dupley, uh, which is uh, the name for Tetanel now. They're based uh, only a mile or two away from where I live here in Leicester. And they have a big showroom and test area. So they lent me that for the day for me to go up and do some testing and have a look at this printer. Now, I will have a longer video. I recorded lots of video clips. That's just a still from one with me. Me for scale, showing the printer there. Um, I recorded lots of video clips. Now, I'm going to have to edit these all together. Um, it's the first time I've tried doing this approach. Uh, so I can't go back and redo it easily. Well, I probably could because only just up the road but anyway um, I'm just going to go through some of the key points of the printer if you've got any questions please do let me know because then when I'm putting through the uh, notes for the other video I can try and address some of those bits and pieces and I'll come back to this printer when I've evaluated some of the color management data I've got. Now I took my good old i1 ISIS here to do some profiles and I made some paper profiles here. Um, there, there's this laptop. The reason I still cart around this old laptop is this works great with this. It takes a while to read in. There's nearly 3,000 patches on the target there and I profiled a few papers. Now I have recorded, saved the measurement data files for these as well, as well as the profiles I created. So um, at some point I'm going to be putting these, I'll put these on the Northlight Images website and if anyone specifically wants to have a play with the colour management data that I got from the uh, the readings from uh, this uh, target here, let me know and I'll sort out a reply, you know, uh, some way for you to get hold of the data. Um, I've made some profiles, I'll have a look at them, but you know, that's the kit I was using. That's the printer. Quite a nice printer. Um, it's, let me say, a, this is the dual roll option. Now, the two rolls here, you can swap between them quite easily. It has an auto swap so that, for example, I printed an image on and this one that you see here, and I'll show this a bit more. This is on a cotton rag paper. This is on a paper, 315 gram, smooth textured fine art paper, printed using the uh, USFA media setting um, on this pro and profiled with it. But that's a black and white print, and I'll come back to black and white in a bit. But this one here, I'm printing it. You can see the laptop sitting on the screen. I'm connected it up with USB rather than go through all the networks and everything. Now, it was load. It had the other roll of paper loaded, and I sent a print. And in the print dialog specified to use the roll of paper, which is this paper, it automatically unwound one and wound in the other. Now. I don't know that I would necessarily want to be auto-loading expensive papers all the time, but this is really a printer. This is a six-ink printer. It's, it's not made for the fine art market, but I'm going to say from the results, and I'll show a few, few results in a bit, I'm going to say that an awful lot of people would get perfectly acceptable prints from this. Uh, it, it's a bit of a contradiction that six inks is, is good enough for fine art printing. Um, that's normally assumed, no, no, you can't do that. Uh, this, the, you know, it supports the papers, it prints, uh, it prints quite quickly as well. I'm not going to go through all the specs, but, you know, the basic inks for it, and this is the display of it, has six inks, but because it's got a photo black and a matte black, you have to select just one of those for the paper type. Now that's done automatically, there's no black ink switching anymore on this. So that means effectively this is a five ink printer. So it is CMYK plus grey. So you've got black, cyan, magenta, yellow and a grey ink. Um, how they work? Well I'll, I'll show some examples of it, but uh, surprisingly well actually. Now 
And when I look at the details for the colour management from the profiling data, I suspect, I've only had a quick look at it at the moment, that the colour gamut of this is perhaps 80-90% of what you'd get with an 8-ink printer. So that's the old P8000 and the P6000. And it's going to be less in some areas, noticeably less for, than the 12-ink printers. Will that make a difference? Well, it might, but that depends what market you're in and uh, where your prints are going. This is aimed at poster production, photo printing for the general public. And if you're honest about it, most of the general public isn't going to know the extra quality of a 12 color printer if you've dropped it on them. Um, it's just not going to be visible. So there's the inks. It's a big, it has big tanks, big ink tanks. This had 350 mil cartridges installed. You can install 700 mil cartridges as well. Uh, it does hot swapping, for example. But anyway, this the paper, uh, two, lo two rolls loaded up here, 44 inch roll and a 24 inch roll. Uh, they're quite easy to change. There's just a catch and you slide a bit out. And um, you know, the, the process, this, this particular printer is aimed at um, ease of use for your staff. The idea is if you've got a print shop, you haven't got to train them particularly much to be able to use a printer like this. Hence the auto loading, the auto swapping, continuous use. All of these features are made it easy to use. Now you'll see it's right up against a wall here. Um, it does do sheet feeding. You can, sheet, uh, you can tilt the uh, output tray here upwards and directly feed sheets in, it'll do that. It'll print on board as well. But obviously if you're printing on board, you wouldn't have it against the wall like this because otherwise your board's gonna go straight through, hit against the wall, and that's not good. So uh, if you want that, if you want this sort of flush against the wall, look, don't think you're gonna be printing large flat sheets, but it does do it. So there's the roll mechanism for swapping. What about prints? So I'm, I'm gonna, uh, Come back and have a look at the longer video and I've got more detail in that, but I've got to edit that all together to get it right. Here's a colour print uh, printed on the fine art uh, paper. It's a cotton rag. It's uh, a natural one, so it's a slightly warm white, no OBAs in it. And that's a picture of the reeds on the Suffolk coast. It looks great. The colours are just spot on for the... Re I mean, I know in winter what colour these reeds look like. Uh, these reed beds, that's at snake moultings, that is. And yeah, that looks good. That's printed uh, a 24-inch square, so about a 22-inch square image there that's printed on it. Really nice, nice texture. No problems in over-inking or anything like that. Uh, with a good profile, it works perfectly well. Here's the black and white print that you can see coming out of the printer here. Uh, that's, I've printed that from Epson Print Layout. Now, these images are printed on this printer off this 2010 MacBook Pro. So, all right, it takes a little time loading things sometimes and stuff and that, but works perfectly fine with it. The drivers, everything else works on this. This is quite an oldish system, it all works fine. Uh, I'm really pleased to see that Epson still supports older Macs um, in their software. People keep things going for the reason it just works. If it works and it does works for you, keep it. There's no reason to update. But anyway, there's the image. I've set a 24 inch by 72 inch, so six foot long custom paper size for this. And I've printed it and I'm using the grayscale mode. Now there is no ABW mode in this that you find on some of the uh, more ink prints, even on the P700, P900, P5000 I've got here, P7500, etc. This has a grayscale mode, and the grayscale mode works surprisingly well. Uh, in the lighting I'd gear, that print looked pretty much bang on neutral. There are no fine adjustments like you get in the ABW mode, so you might want to look at linearization, and so if you're going to be printing much black and white on here, but that is a black and white print. It works very well. Um, there's the image. It took a while printing. You'll be able to see it in the other video. I've got this bit for it in there. So, and there's the print itself on top of the printer. 
um, works very well. So uh, what have we got? We've got a printer aimed at the signage and poster market, aimed very much as a commercial printer. It's going to need regular use. It's built for regular use. Remember all of these big printers, they're not something you can use one week and then think, oh, a couple of months later, oh, I'll do some more prints. These printers require regular use. Uh, this one, there were no real problems in it. I had to, for this thick paper because of the curl of it and because it, it was quite stiff paper, I had to raise the vacuum settings and I had to raise the head height to be sure that the leading edge of the paper didn't catch on the head at all. But you expect things like that when you're adapting a particular paper to a printer like that. So there we go. Um, that's it. If you've got any questions, please do let me know as I'm going to be putting together the main video about the printer. And as I said, if you've got any colour management questions or want to know more details about that, probably best drop me an email at Northlight Images rather than necessarily via the YouTube comments. And then I can sort of give you more details and show you various things that I've done. Anyway, I hope that's int of interest. Um, if they have some more printers, I might go and do it. Uh, thanks again to Dupli uh, for um, sorting this out to me. Uh, Dupli, by the way, now uh, supply the Pinnacle brand of papers, which was Paper Spectrum, which I've used for years. If you've known my reviews and things over the years, you will know that I've used the local company Paper Spectrum for a lot of stuff. And their papers are now supplied via Dupli. Um, same, yeah, also here in Leicester. But um, there you go. Oh, and thanks for Epson for encouraging me to actually go and do this. So thanks, and oh, please do subscribe to the channel. Always appreciate it. Thanks.